Uh, here we go, heading into week three, going to the big house, play Michigan. I know our guys are excited about it. Um, you know, disappointed in the outcome last week, but you know, we got right back in Sunday and uh, went right back to work. And folks now is on Michigan. Yeah, he's, um, it's not a hamstring. It's obturator internus, which uh, it, it's a better injury than a hamstring because he'll come back much faster. He actually started practicing today. So he's, uh, he did all the exchange drills and he threw the ball. Um, so he will be suited up out there. Will he play or start? Um, that's questionable right now, but he'll, he'll be available. I think it will. I mean, it really is his level of comfort if he can execute the entire thing. You know, I mean, I think right now some of the, the, the run pass conflicts we want to put defenses in, it might be a little bit much for him, but we'll find out and we'll make the decision uh, on game day. Just an obturator in Turnus? Obturator in Turnus, yeah. I actually wrote that down so I could pronounce it. <laughs> yeah. Huh? Uh, it's not a hamstring. It's it's something right here in the groin area that uh, kind of gives you the you know same deal. But it's nowhere near as bad. And uh, like I said, he he was out there Sunday walking around with us, and today he was out there. He went through all the agilities. He threw the ball today. He was able to do exchanges. So um, it's unfortunate that you know that occurred last Saturday. But um, you know the fortunate part is we'll get him back a lot sooner than we had expected. When I saw him go down, I thought it would be something a lot worse than this. So. Well, we'll let the medical staff decide that. You know, I mean, obviously there's got to be a level of comfort he has, and then they ultimately have to be able to, you know, tell us that, hey, he's ready to go. If he doesn't play, do you tailor the offense more to Kyle Dixon's running style? Or? A little bit. I mean, I think we, I mean, even when Blake went down, it was it was a you know run pass conflict play. You know, so um, you know our offense is our offense, and you know we're still teaching it. These guys are still learning it, so we're not going to tweak it too much. And, and the priority for Snead, and I'll get off this topic. Yep. The priority for Snead is. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and Blake won't be down for a long time. I mean, again, right now, if we had to, if we had to put, yeah, if he got hurt again, yeah, obviously he'd be the two. But right now, he is the three because we don't have Thompson. So, um, you know, we'll, you know, I'm sure he'll be he'll be traveling to every game this year. And if you know, we don't have to burn that red shirt, we won't. But if we do, we will. And um, he's ready to go, though. I mean, he's a good young guy. He's got some, you know, a lot of good skills, and we have trust in him. You know, you don't want to put too much on a true freshman, but we have a lot of true freshmen. We've already put a lot on already. So, um, together, we're growing as a team, and uh, and he'll be ready if, if you know if the time comes. Yep. One, were you ever a fan of that team? Two, now when you bring a team in there, I, I understand you will take them there on Friday to see it. Yeah. When you take a team there for the first time, how do you get in their minds, hey, it's cool to play because it's such, such history here, but you're here to win. I mean, how, where's that fine balance if you want them to experience a place like that and yet you don't want them to say, you look around, keep looking around the game. Yeah, well, you know, first of all, when it comes to your first question, you know, I'm a fan of college football. I mean, I loved it from when I was a little kid. So you always like watching games at the big house. And there's so many memorable moments. And the thing I respect so much is their history and tradition. I mean, they just do a great job of embracing it. So it's going to be fun to be a part of that for an afternoon. Um, and bringing our guys, you know, it's no different. I mean, when I coached Cal High, we went and played uh, at Seahawks Stadium. And, you know, we brought them in a day earlier. We walked them through so they kind of got the jitters out. Uh, when I coached at Cal High, we played at, you know, Oakland Coliseum, you know, where the Raiders played. And same thing. We got them there, you know, a day earlier. Um, you know, Bishop Gorman, and we had a chance to go play over at uh, Cardinal Stadium, you know, so did a lot of those things previously, so it's the same mind frame when you go in with these guys, you know, they'll go there, it, it, it's a great historic uh, opportunity for these guys to play, but we don't want to be thinking about that on game day, so we'll have our one hour practice at a local high school, then we'll bust over to the big house, let the guys walk around, take the pictures, enjoy the moment, so game day, they're just ready to play. And did you, uh, last week you talked about having balance in your schedule of maybe one of these every other year, I know Ohio State's down the road, people like that, but if you prefer major college programs and non-conference, wouldn't do you specifically? I heard you specifically prefer West Coast schools. Well, it's Arizona, Arizona State, UCLA, UC. Both you might be recruiting at some point, but your kids can see you more that way. Absolutely. I mean, if I had, you know, a hand in, in the scheduling, um, and I know our AD's done a great job moving forward, you know, we kind of inherited what we have right now. Um, it's a great schedule, but again, you look at the UCLA matchup, and it was a great crowd. It was a packed house. It was a great atmosphere to come to. There's a lot of ties in our community to Southern California. You know, next year when we go there, we'll, our fans will be able to travel and get to the game. You know, later on, we have a game against Arizona State. It's the same type of thing. A lot of direct connections between Vegas and the Phoenix area. So those things, to me, are natural fit. So if you could choose to do that and do that consistently if we're going to play a big game. I think it's advantageous to everyone if we play in Pac-12 schools. I have not been there. So you, you're, this is first for you too. 
yeah, but you know, when I was a player, we played University of Florida, and they ranked number one at home, and you know, got to play against Iowa. And you know, the first game I ever got to, you know, coach in, in, in Division One football was against University of Texas, coached against LSU before. So, you know, been to some big environments. I mean, are you looking forward to seeing this play? Yeah, I'm excited. I mean, again, you know, it's game day. I, mean, I don't care who we're playing. We just can't wait to get back on the field. You know, I mean, it's um, it's exciting, but literally, we need to all have, you know, we need to be in the pocket and have the mindset it's just a football game. It's kind of like the old movie Hoosiers when he went and, you know, he measured to the free throw line, he measured to the hoop. It's the same size. How about Jake and Penny? Have you uh, thought about playing in the big house? And what does it mean to you guys? I mean, uh, it's an exciting opportunity. You know, you don't really have uh, many to play there, but then again, it's just a game. It's just another football Saturday. Yeah, if you're focused on the stadium, you're focused on the wrong thing, honestly. Uh, we got a team to play, and that's all I'm really concerned about. Penny, one second. About the second period, it takes you to like, you guys did a really good job of not really putting the receivers get open. Just how important is that moving forward to have that kind of performance? Um, you know, we, as a secondary, you know, we got to keep uh, – Growing, we got a we got a lot to improve on, but uh, we just got to keep you know having each other's backs and uh, uh, we just got to tackle more. You know, starting with myself. You know, we didn't really do too good in that part. Yeah, you know, one of the biggest things we talk about is not giving up explosive plays. And, you know, you take away that 52-yard run where, you know, we literally were ungapped sound one play. You know, other than that, the largest run of the night was 16 yards and gave up no pass plays over 30 yards. So, you know, that, that's a big thing, not giving up big plays. So we improved in that department and we'll continue to do so. So, you know, again, you know, we, you know, we held them to some field goals we needed to. We, the defense was put in some bad situations and fought their way out of it. So, you know, overall, I was proud of the way they played. But there's still room for improvement on both sides. Um, when uh, he was at Stanford, um, we had a young man from Bishop Gorman that went to Stanford. And then also when I was at Cal High, when he was at Stanford, there were some guys there that they were recruited to. So, uh, you know, Coach Shaw is there right now. I know, know him well from those days. And uh, it's kind of funny when you go back to, I believe it was his first year, which was 2008 season, I believe. And uh, so spring football, me and my entire Cal High staff were sitting there at 6 a.m. in, the, in the waiting room. And he comes walking in and says, who are you guys? And I said, I'm Coach Sanchez. I coach at Cal High. And here we are a bunch of years later. So pretty neat deal. Yeah, you know, you do. It's kind of funny. Coaches don't really think about coaches. You know, I mean, you know, when he comes running out, you know, that's not intimidating. When his team comes running out, that's a little intimidating, you know. Um, no, but, I mean, I'm just making light of it. It's uh, – you don't really think about that stuff. It's really about you yourself. It's about the X's and O's. I mean, you know, it's, it's good talk, and I get that, that whole part of it. But uh, he's a good football coach, done well everywhere he's been. The thing I respect the, mo the most is he brings a toughness, and I think that there's uh, – that's such an important ingredient to building a football program. It's what we're doing here at UNLV. Absolutely. Hey, you know what? If you don't have that, you can't hang your hat on anything. Well, I mean, I think it's obvious. I mean, they're, they're, they're a big physical team. They, they want to put you in uh, they want to put you in, in a phone booth and fight. I mean, literally. I mean, they run power, they run power, and they run more power. And, you know, and uh, that's what they do, you know. And because of that, it, that kind of dictates the type of defense they play. You know, it's um, a very physical brand of football. It's Michigan football. He's done a great job so far. You know, I mean, they, they've turned the ball over, I believe, five times in the last two games. Um, I believe three picks, two, uh, two fumbles. So we have to do a good job of there. You know, we got three turnovers last game. You know, and we got to continue to grow on that. And I think, again, in these big games, we have to create turnovers to give ourselves opportunities. Um, so, you know, again, it, it is new. It's a new offense for him. He's in a, you know, new situation. So we have to put him in, do what we did last week and, you know, and not let the quarterback get settled back there. Um, you know, they're, they're kind of similar in ways, um, pocket QBs, but uh, playing against Rosen, the quarterback like that, he was, he was a good quarterback, and uh, I'm sure this guy's a good, good quarterback too, but it prepared us a lot. You know, it, you, nothing's different. I mean, it, it, it's hard to explain. I think, you know, anyone who's been in the coaching profession knows that you have a process that you go through that starts on Sunday night and it ends on game day. And that doesn't change no matter who's in there. I mean, it really doesn't. So we've had a lot of time with Kurt. I mean, we, we had the entire spring. We had the summer. We had our camp. You know, we've been through a couple of games. I mean, you saw him go in in week one, and I know he's kind of getting beat up a little bit outside of here right now, but week one he goes in. What does he do? He drives us right down, scores a touchdown, makes a couple of nice plays. And he got put in a tough situation the other night, you know, and, 
uh, you know, he felt the pressure, tried to do a little too much. And But there was a lot of things we could have improved on, you know what I mean? And it starts with me, you know. So it's not all on Kurt. It starts with me, and then it rolls down from there. So he'll be fine. We just got to calm him down, get him going, you know, make sure Snead's ready to go. And then also, you know, and, and again, Decker, you know, we'll see what happens with him. But I have faith in Kurt, you know. Again, that's why we recruited him, and we, we, we believe in him. No, I mean, these guys, you know, they're used to at 9 a.m. or halfway through practice. So, I mean, that's kind of a normal deal for us. So that works out real well. Now, you're going to have that time change when you travel. So we got to make sure we do a good job of, you know, getting those guys to bed on time and getting their motor started. And But, uh, again, they're used to being out there running around at that time. So former NFL coach versus former high school coach, are there qualities or advantages that each brings into this that the other can't? Um, you know, I mean, I think it's, uh, it, again, you don't take really any time thinking about that. You know, I mean, I think I've, uh, I coached against a former NFL coach last week, you know, and I coached against one of the most successful college coaches in the last bunch of years in Northern Illinois the first week. Um, so it's, uh, I, I think, you know, we're, uh, we're doing a good job and that, it's not really a consideration much at all. So he's a good coach. I mean, it's why he's had the opportunities that he's had, you know, I mean, what he did at University of San Diego, then what he did at Stanford to turn them around. Look at his job, what he did in the NFL. I mean, it was an unbelievable job, you know. And, and now he's got a new turnaround here at Michigan. And, you know, we're, we're taking a – you know, we're on a different course. You know, same same goal, same results, and uh, we're getting it done our way. Jake, with the Michigan's defense, they gave up the early scores with the Oregon State and then just shut them down after that. What, did, you, did you watch much video of that game? What, if you have, what stands out to you about the defense? Big and physical. They're big and physical. They're defensive ends, 300-pounders. Uh, not quite as fast as UCLA's, but they're they're a physical team, and we need to punch them in the mouth before they punch us. So, and that's what we plan on doing. Most about their defense, you know, physicality. I mean, they're just they're real big and physical up front. Um, they're uh, you know they're real sound. They don't do a ton of stuff. You know, I mean, they're going to play with a, you know one high safety most of the evening. You know, and they're going to load the box. And uh, you know, they're, they're, I'm sure we're going to see some similar things that we saw against UCLA. They gave us a little bit different of a look than we than we thought, and uh, I'm sure they're going to copycat a little bit of that. But they're you know they're still building and developing too. You know you got to think about it too. They have a new coach, and they're in their third game and their evolution. So I'm sure they're more focused on themselves than us, and just like we're more focused on ourselves than we are them right now. And if you look at the the first two games from the defensive aspect, really good first halves, and then it kind of get, gets away. In the second half, I think it's easy to say maybe that's fatigue or just not having enough depth. I mean, what, what, what do you see as the reason why you have really good first half and then just kind of points start to pile up a little more? Um, you know, I think it's we, we have really good first halves. So we come out, you know, exciting, um, energized. And uh, in the second half, you know, it, it seems like maybe some of the players might be letting it go away. But, uh, you know, we, we got to, um, as players, seniors, you know, we got to do a better job as keeping everybody on their feet, you know, getting them going and just keeping the energy alive. Which college team did I root for growing up? You know, I mean, again, I grew up in the Bay Area, so, you know, I went to Cal games, you know, watched those guys play a little bit, but I was always a, always just a fan of college football, so I watched it a lot. You know, again, I, you know, growing up, I was more of a Raider fan than any other fan, you know, um, but just watch the game in general. Did you watch that? Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, and that's a big difference, I think, between what I was growing up and young guys now. I mean, we didn't play the games on the video, you know, machines or I don't know what you guys call them now, right? Xboxes or whatever. I think ours was Nintendo. We had like four plays to choose from. No, we watched football. I mean, that's all you did. I mean, you, you went out and played light pole to light pole football, and when it got dark, you came in and you watched it. So it's, uh, it's a great game. That's it. You know, we got Blake, uh, you know, uh, Jeremiah Vologa. It looks like we're about a week away from getting him back. That'll be a big addition, getting him back on the defensive line. So we're excited about that. Um, but that's the only injury we have right now. Coach, just out of curiosity, if you, if you were a 40 point underdog and you had the ball at the 35 yard line with 40 seconds to go, what would you do? You're on and, it's tied, and, it's, and, and the score's tied. And the ball was at what yard line? 35. Well, I'd kick the same field goal we kicked against Northern Illinois and make it. So you're on 35. Oh, you're, you're on 35. Be hell of a kick. Oh, we go for I mean, it's tie game? Yeah, tie game. You're a huge underdog. You have, your, you have the ball, and you're 
I know what you're alluding to. You're alluding to another game that happened this week. You know, I personally would, would, would try to go down and get in a field goal situation, but here's the deal. You know, you know, unless you spend as much time as those coaches do preparing and getting ready, I, I know it's popular to do, and, need, and that's our jobs. You know, it doesn't, we never take it personal, the questioning, but I know the game you're alluding to. You know, and he did what he felt was right for his team, so I would never question what another coach does. I know what I would do, but, you know, I, again, what, what he did was right for him and his organization.